What's up, AFL Fantasy Freak fam? It's Jacob Leoparty here, aka AFL Fantasy Freak. If you're new around here, make sure to smash the subscribe button for more AFL Fantasy content. In this video, guys, I'm going to be covering round two of the AFL, how my team went, where I'm ranked, and give you a little bit of insight into my uh, trade analysis, as well as potential targets and moves that I'll be looking to do this week coming up. Enjoy. So we'll just jump straight into how I went this week. Um, for those that follow me on Twitter, you'd know that uh, this week was a little bit of a roller coaster ride. Uh, had some really good scores, some good performers that stood up for me later in the round. But early on, um, I'll cover my trades and how they went. In particular, the one bloke that pissed me off this week was Darcy Parrish. Uh, had a little bit, bit of a meltdown over his performance, his score. Uh, he managed to score 51, which was ended up being not the end of the world, but the bloke was on 13 at quarter time, and halfway through the third quarter was on seven points. So that's uh, obviously not ideal. He was one that I was uh, chop, chop, catch you later, but um, injuries to Caldwell and Dylan Shield uh, mean that he'll probably get the role that I was looking for originally. So I think he's one that I'm willing to let stay around. The main positives for me this week were Jared Witts. I thought his performance in the ruck was spectacular, scored 110. He's shaping up to be a fantastic pick so far this year, along with Andrew Brayshaw. So I identified Brayshaw early in the preseason as one that coming into his fourth year, added leadership group responsibilities. I thought that he was a candidate to take his game to a further level, and I opted to start with him over Sam Walsh, just as a little bit of a point of difference, and as a guy that I thought had similar, if not better, capabilities. His average of 116 over the first two rounds is, is great, and I'm certainly bloody stoked to have him in my side at, at this point in the year. As for my score this week, I didn't score particularly super. 19.22 was my total, but that was good enough for me to hold my rank. I'm still ranked 326, so a little bit of a slide from last week, but still overall really happy with where I'm sitting considering the round I had wasn't too fantastic. I'm really happy with the development of my team. Obviously, I've preached pretty heavily over the last couple of weeks to prioritise cash generation early. And out of the top 100 teams, my side is valued one of the highest. My team value is over 14 mil at this stage and is something that I'm looking to continue to build on early in the year. So I'll get to my trades later in this video, but certainly still looking to target value picks. There's a lot of rookies coming through, so that's probably where I'll be looking. This week, my trades didn't turn out very well at all, to be honest. There wasn't really any positives to take away from the moves I did, other than the fact that the concept and the ideas behind the players that I got, I still think were the correct choice and therefore I'm not too disappointed with, with the outcome. So my first trade, uh, for those that don't know, I was in a luxury position, didn't have Rao, Dangerfield, Harms, etc. So I had quite a lot of freedom in what I could do with my side and therefore I opted to trade Jordan to Goey. Still side bottom coming in was a concern for me his midfield minutes last week weren't as high as I thought and still coming in was going to negatively affect that. During the Collingwood game, we saw Elliot get severely injured too, so it's looking like Degoe is going to be spending time forward. 
I did trade him to Jai Caldwell. So Jai, great role, unfortunate. He's done his hamstring, poor score, must trade now. I still think that that was a fantastic trade. I think Dugowie is going to be someone that a lot of people look to, to get rid of this week. So that's just unfortunate. Have to move on from there. My second trade, I traded Atkins from Geelong. Uh, not something I particularly wanted to do as I quite liked his role, even though his score was poor last week. But being in the luxury position, I thought that he's not going to make that much money unless he has a big game, uh, which he did go on to score 88 points this week. I traded him to Jaden Stevenson. So Stevenson's role, I still think, is relatively good despite Anderson coming into the side. I'm going to be holding on to him. I don't think trading him this week's an option for mine. But it was a little bit frustrating as I did lose 78 points out of my trades and picked up a force injury trade as well. So not great from that perspective. All right, so I'm just going to go over a few questions in terms of I got asked during the week about a lot of guys, Zach Williams, Andrew McGrath, and then also guys like Gorn Grundy. So I gave my advice during the week as to hold a Gorn slash Grundy type. And if you did listen to that advice, you would have got rewarded this week as both tunned up. I think that... Zach Williams was an interesting one for me. Personally, I thought he was quite overrated in the off-season. I advised people this week to not bring him in as his break-even was high at 82. And even if he was to perform well, he wasn't going to go anywhere in price. So in hindsight, definitely better to chase the value. Um, so I was recommending guys trade in uh, missed rookies like your Jordans, etc., over sideways trading a row to a Williams. Williams scored poor this week, and now those that have him, unfortunately, you're stuck with him for a while. Um, those that don't have him can potentially get him later, but he's a wait and see for mine. I'm not too sold on him just yet. Guys that were disappointing again this round, we have. Gaff, Neil, Riley O'Brien, Adam Trelaw. Look, the important part and a huge reason to being successful in AFL fantasy is nailing those premiums early in the year. You want to make sure you try and avoid guys like these that have a huge dip at the start of the year. That's going to really put you behind the eight ball. So, there's a lot of guys out there that do have these types of players and my advice for you is whilst they're bleeding a lot of cash, I think the wise move is to hold, try generate value in other ways, focus on keep on bringing these rookies through, uh, potentially a couple mid-price guys as well, but these premium guys are tried and true. So your Neil, Gaff, Trelaw, all average 100, 110 plus year out consistently. So they're going to bounce back. And by you trading them out at a low point, you are pretty much consolidating that cash loss. Plus, you don't get to ride the good scores that will eventually come at some point. So I think hold those guys. The one that I would be considering moving on is O'Brien. That's just due to the fact that he's due to plummet a tremendous amount of cash, even though he's already lost 100k. Um, but rucks this year don't look to be advantaged at all. So whilst we did see some better scoring in the ruck department, I'm still of the opinion that over the next few rounds, the rucks are going to still struggle relative to previous seasons. And therefore... I can't see O'Brien really lifting his scores up to a level that make it worth keeping him. If you don't have Flynn on the field, that's the obvious move there. And then use the cash elsewhere. But 
O'Brien's one that I would consider moving on. As for what I'm looking to do this week, I obviously have Caldwell. He's a forced trade. He'll be going to a rookie for me, most likely. The other option is targeting a Josh Dunkley. I think that I'll be using my trades this week to further consolidate strength on my bench. So for me, I have Ned Cahill. He's made 7K in two weeks. Potentially gets dropped this week. Has been pretty unimpressive. I'll be looking to go him to a Bergman or a Brockman. One of these forward rookies that I don't have that look to make 40, 50K this week. And also provide more cash generation going forward. Same thing with Caldwell. He'll probably be going to a Campbell or another rookie. I'll have to evaluate whether I think Campbell's worth the extra price tag. He obviously played very well on the weekend. But like I said at the start of the video, I'll be looking to build value, generate cash. I'm pretty happy with where my side's sitting and some of my premium type options are doing well enough to hold my rank and still score respectively each week. So I'm not worried about potentially giving up points earlier in the year and just going to chase value. Build this value, build these uh, rookies, fatten them up, and then that'll give me the opportunity to do a lot more upgrades a lot quicker this year. In terms of guys that I'd be looking to bring in this week, I think from a premium perspective, Josh Dunkley is the one if you don't have him. He's got the midfield role back. He's going to be the number one forward this year with that role, in my opinion. And he's still slightly underpriced currently, so he's one that I'd be targeting, regardless if you were doing a forward upgrade or a midfield upgrade. I think if you're paying up, Tom Mitchell is a target. He looks like he's going to be in for a big year again. But I don't think he's a must-have, and personally, I'd be chasing value over doing a move like that. He's one to look at, though, if you are sold on getting a premium option. In defence, I quite like Jack Crisp. He's playing a lot through the middle at the moment. Uh, the development of Quainar Noble has enabled him to push up the field and get more freedom through the middle. And we've seen that in the past... Crispy, when he goes through the middle, he's able to score quite well. His average is over 100 to start the year, and I think that he'll be 100 plus this year and a top six defender. So he's one that I can see upside in early and one that I would target if looking for a defender premium option. As for rookies, I'll flash the break evens up on the screen so you guys can have a quick look. You want to be factoring job security as well as break even when targeting a rookie as you need them to hang around for a few weeks to generate the cash needed to be worth the move. I'll be uploading my trade guide this week up on my website as well as my watch list article. So I haven't uploaded one of these yet, but essentially what this is is a guide of left field players that I'm looking at not necessarily to bring in right now, but guys that I'm interested in, they have good roles and they could potentially be in for a good year. So guys like Adam Chera from Fremantle, he's one that I've got my eye on quite intently. Uh, obviously, I'll highlight a bunch more when that article comes out. And for those that are interested in staying up to date, you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at AFL Fantasy Freak to get notifications to when this information will be out for you guys to see. There you have it, guys. That's my wrap for round two. Overall, I'm pretty happy with where I'm sitting right now. My team's in a great position. Uh, obviously, on the road to top 100, and I'm in a fantastic position at this stage, this season, to potentially fulfill that goal. So... For those that have enjoyed the content, make sure to give this video a like. Drop a comment below if you have any questions regarding your side. Hit the subscribe button for more AFL fantasy content. And until next time, guys, keep climbing up the ranks. Look, I
I'm about my pledge, bitch. I'm decked up on blue bills, and I won't stop until the cash pit look like fall leaves in the bag fill. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit. Quick to say my peace, I'm so after school special. She.